Welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing melanocytic lesions. So I apologise for the abrupt ending to the previous video. Let's now finish up our discussion of melanoma. So, at the end of the previous video, we said that melanoma is a malignant tumour of melanocytes with a high metastatic potential. Now, there are two major categories of tissue that melanoma can metastasize to. The first is the regional draining lymph nodes. So remember, all areas of skin are going to have lymphatic drainage, and the lymph vessels draining an area of skin will drain into lymph nodes. And the lymph nodes that drain a certain area of skin are known as the regional lymph nodes for that area of skin. So, the area of skin affected by the melanoma is going to have regional draining lymph nodes, and the melanoma can throw off cells into the lymphatic vessels, which will then end up in those regional draining lymph nodes, and which can then set up secondary tumours, metastatic tumours, in those regional draining lymph nodes. The second category of tissue that melanoma can metastasize to are distal tissues. So the melanoma can throw off cells that will enter the bloodstream and then they can leave the bloodstream at far away tissues and set up metastatic secondary tumours in far off distal tissues. And the distal tissues that melanoma has a affinity to metastasize to are the lungs, the liver, the bone and the brain. Let me also just remind you about the different stages of cancer. So for all different forms of cancer, not just melanoma, but for all stages, we can divide cancer into four stages, stages one to four. Remember, stages one and two are where you just have the primary tumour, so no metastases. Stage one is where the primary tumour is small. Stage two is where the primary tumour is bigger. Stage 3 is then when you have the primary tumour as well as lymph node metastases. So when the tumour has metastasized to the lymph nodes but you don't yet have distal metastases, that is stage 3 cancer. Stage 4 cancer is then when the cancer has spread to far off distant sites, so you have distal metastases, potentially brain metastases, that is stage 4 cancer. So we can divide melanoma into these four stages, as indeed we can divide any different form of cancer into those four stages. Now, I said at the end of the previous video that melanoma can arise from moles, so this is a commonly known fact that moles can turn into melanoma. However, the risk for a melanocytic nevus turning into a melanoma is actually very, very low. And in fact, the majority of melanomas don't arise from moles. They instead arise spontaneously from areas of skin that were not affected by moles. Next, what I want to tell you is that just like when we were talking about melanocytic nevi and we talked about the fact that the uh, cells of the nevus can either be above the basement membrane or below the basement membrane of the epidermis, again, when you have a melanoma, a malignant tumour of melanocytes, you can have cells both above and below the basement membrane. So if we look at our picture here, we can see that this bit here of the melanoma looks more raised than this bit. And the reason for that is that probably... In this area, the cells of the melanoma are both above the basement membrane and below the basement membrane, i.e. they've extended into the dermis, which is why this is so raised. Whereas in this other portion here, where it looks less raised, that probably is an area where the, mel where the melanoma cells are just above the basement membrane in the epidermis, rather than uh, having spread down into the dermis as well. Next thing I want to talk about is the treatment for melanoma, and this really depends on what stage of melanoma you are at. If you have just stage 1 or 2 melanoma, i.e. you just have the primary tumour with no metastases, then of course the curative treatment is quite simply to cut the thing out, and indeed that is what dermatologists, specialist skin doctors, will do. If you have stage 3 melanoma, that's where, remember, the melanoma has spread to the lymph nodes, so you've got lymph node metastases, then the treatment is going to be to remove the primary treatment, sorry, to remove the primary tumour and also remove the lymph nodes to which it has spread, so remove the regional lymph nodes as well. So it's surgical treatment for stage 1, 2 and 3. Once you get to stage 4 and you 
have got distal metastases potentially in the brain, the lungs, the liver, and the bone, then it becomes very, very difficult to cure, and it's very, very rare that you can then cure it. The treatment is then with systemic chemotherapy, and the classical agent that is used is a drug called decarbazine. Now, decarbazine is also often referred to as DTIC. So this drug is a classical chemotherapeutic agent. So remember, classical chemotherapeutic agents, they all work pretty much in the same way, and that is that they, broadly speaking, kill cells that are dividing rapidly. So they don't kill all cells, they kill cells that are dividing rapidly. And that's how they kill cancer, because cancer is uh, a tumour of very rapidly dividing cells. So decarbazine is a classical chemotherapeutic agent that is going to kill rapidly dividing cells. Unfortunately, it generally doesn't manage to cure stage 4 melanoma, and instead we give it to people with stage 4 melanoma to slow down the progression and manage symptoms. Because, of course, if we can keep the uh, distal metastases as small as possible, then the symptoms that they're going to be giving rise to by uh, affecting the tissues that they're in uh, will be reduced. So, for instance, if you've got lung metastases, those are going to destroy healthy lung tissue and therefore are going to make you short of breath. If we give you this drug and keep those metastases nice and short, sorry, nice and small, uh, then we can reduce your symptoms and improve your quality of life and prolong your life, even though we can't actually cure you of this disease. So that is the treatment for stage 4 melanoma, but be aware that it can't cure it and eventually the disease is likely to progress, despite the treatment. So... The final thing that I want to discuss, and a very important thing, is how do you actually spot a melanoma? How do you distinguish it between other hyperpigmented spots? So there are two major things that I would say for how to suspect that a hyperpigmented spot may be a melanoma. The first is evolution. Is it changing? If a hyperpigmented lesion on the skin is growing and does not stop growing, then that is highly suspicious for melanoma and it should be biopsied by a dermatologist. And then if it's found to be cancerous, it needs to be removed. Moles, in contrast, these should grow and they should reach their full size within a few weeks and then they should stop growing. So if you have a hyperpigmented lesion that is just growing and growing and growing and growing and hasn't yet stopped growing, that is highly suspicious for melanoma. So that should be uh, a red flag sign that says this thing needs to be biopsied. The other rule that I would say is very, very useful is the ugly duckling rule. Now, when people talk about melanoma, they often talk about A, B, C, D, E, where each of those letters stands for a characteristic of melanoma. And by the way, the E in that acronym is evolution, changing. However, I think that the other parts of that um, acronym, A, B, C, D, can easily be summarized into the ugly duckling rule. So I actually prefer the ugly duckling rule than the A, B, C, D, E rule. So this is what the ugly duckling rule says. It says that if you've got a hyperpigmented lesion that is the ugly duckling, then that is suspicious for melanoma and that should be biopsied. Now, something that I should actually probably point out that is very important to understand is that even skin specialists, doctors that specialize in skin, dermatologists, they cannot be absolutely sure that a hyperpigmented lesion is not a melanoma. They can be 99% sure that it is probably just a mole, but even then, they cannot be 100% sure. The only way to be 100% sure is to take a biopsy. And the name of the game in dermatology is not to miss melanoma. So a lot of hyperpigmented lesions that get referred to dermatologists will be biopsied because they absolutely do not want to miss melanoma. However, this rule is still very, very important, which is the ugly duckling rule. So coming back to this rule, this rule says that if you have a hyperpigmented lesion that is different 
it's the ugly duckling compared to other hyperpigmented lesions that you might have, then that should be biopsied. So let me explain this in more detail. Let's say you have many moles, so you have a bunch of melanocytic nevi. If you then take one of these and go and see a dermatologist about it, if you, if, when the dermatologist looks at that mole, they will compare it to other hyperpigmented lesions that you have, the other moles you have. And if it looks exactly the same as the other moles you have, then it is not the ugly duckling, and you can be pretty confident that it is not a melanoma. Whereas if it looks very different from the other ones, if it's the ugly duckling compared to the other ones, that is a red flag sign to the dermatologist that says that this lesion should be biopsied. So let me then summarise what we have said about melanoma. So it's a highly malignant tumour of melanocytes. It can spread to very important tissues, the lung, the brain, the liver, and the bone, whereas other forms of skin cancer, BCC and SCC, they don't tend to metastasize. Once you have distal metastases, it is very unlikely that you are going to be able to be cured, and instead the uh, treatment for that is to manage the symptoms and prolong life and improve the quality of life. A key part of dermatology is spotting melanomas and spotting lesions that are at risk of being melanomas. And the really important rules that I would uh, say are useful for flagging up lesions that could be melanomas are, is it changing? Has it not stopped growing? If it's continuing to grow past a few weeks, then it is probably not a mole and it, it should be biopsied in case it is a melanoma. The other key thing is to say that when you are looking at any hyperpigmented lesion and assessing whether it is a melanoma, look at the rest of the person's skin. If they have loads of other hyperpigmented lesions that look exactly the same, then that means that the one you're looking at is, not, is almost certainly not going to be a melanoma because they're not going to be covered in melanomas. Um, so that's the ugly duckling rule. Compare it to other things that the individual may have on their skin. And if it looks similar, then it's probably fine. If it looks different, then it should be biopsied to work out whether it is a melanoma or isn't. And remember, the only way to be 100% sure whether a hyperpigmented lesion is a melanoma or not is to have it biopsied. But as I say, use the ugly duckling rule. If they've got lots of them, then it almost certainly isn't anything to worry about. It's if it looks different to anything else that they've got that you get worried, and that's the ugly duckling rule. And as you can see, this one looks very different um, from uh, the other things that we have seen. It looks much nastier, it's much more irregular, uh, and uh, you know, you've got a part that's raised and a part that's flat. It does not look like uh, normal moles. And with that, we will end this video on melanocytic lesions. Thank you for watching.